We are open for business on a sunny Saturday in the Valley. The Diamondbacks coming off last night's win over the Cubs in the Saturday Black tonight. And with a chance to make it two straight over the NL Central favorites, we are set for Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona Plus. And good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume, Bob Brenly along the way. It is the Diamondbacks and the Chicago Cubs, the third of a four-game series. And after last night's walk-off win, Bob, if Zach Greinke can do his thing here tonight, we might be off and running in 2016. Yeah, you talk about momentum. Yasmani Tomas with the big game-winning hit, and then your ace takes the ball the next day. Zach Greinke, not real good opening day. Had that one terrible inning, but uh, over the course of the last four starts last season, his ERA after a loss was 0.34. This guy's somewhat of a perfectionist. You know he wants to put a good start on the board tonight. And wants to bounce back from his effort Monday again. Against the Rockies when he gave up seven earned runs on nine hits and only four innings, three of those home runs. This is the difference maker, right? You got the momentum that starts last night, and now you've got this type of pitcher to roll out there here today. That's why you like to have an ace or two on that in that rotation, a guy that can stop losing streaks and possibly extend winning streaks. Well, here's the guy that may have started a winning streak last night. It's Il Dunque, Yasmani Tomas. Chip Hale said the pitch he hit last night was about Adam's apple high, but he got on top of it for the walk-off single. Right where he likes it, yeah. Pedro stroke fastball at about 95 miles an hour up around neck high, but got enough bat on it to hit that soft line drive into left field and score Chris Owings. Uh, you could tell his teammates were very excited for him. Yasmani's had some tough at bats in the early going, but the biggest at bat of the season last night he came through. He's out there in left field again today. A change for Chip Hale's lineup this evening against the Cubs. Game three of this series. Brandon Drury will get the start at third base. And we had thought, Bob, that Brandon looked a little skittish here after getting regular at bats in spring training and coming off the bench here once the season started. Uh, his timing appeared to be off just a little bit. It doesn't take much, however, to get back into that rhythm, get back in that groove. Took some ground balls early. Earlier today down there at third base you know he too is very excited for this start tonight and we're excited to bring it to you on Fox Sports Arizona plus the Diamondbacks with a chance to clinch at least a split with the NL Central favorites first pitch on the way Zach Greinke on the mound it's Diamondbacks baseball Fox Sports Arizona Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by CenturyLink switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience Learn more at cprismtv.com. By Jack in the Box and the Jumbo Jack, a home run for your mouth. And by your Valley Honda dealers, where you get more standard features for less money.
Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Choose Chaz. By Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. By Tire Pros. For the best selection of Continental and General Brand tires, visit one of the 22 locally owned Arizona Tire Pros locations. And by Cox Gigablad. How will you live the gig life? Ah, uh, what a night to be here at Chase Field. First pitch is coming up. Kyle H Hendricks for the Cubs and Zach Greinke for the Diamondbacks. We are back from downtown Phoenix right after this. Set for baseball on a perfect evening to be at Chase Field in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome in on Fox Sports Arizona Plus, the Cubs and the Diamondbacks. And as we join the evolution, the uniform of the day, the black alternate jersey with the black gradient A cap as Zach Renke takes the mound here in downtown Phoenix for his second start in his Arizona Diamondbacks career. D-backs trying to roll with some momentum here after last night's walk-off win over Joe Madden's Cubs, who suffered their first loss of the season here last night. And this series still up for grabs as we play the third of a four-game set at Chase Field. Good to slow down this Cubs machine a little bit last night. Their offense that was firing on all cylinders in the first game of this series. Uh, slowed down a little bit by Robbie Ray and the Diamondbacks bullpen. Hopefully more of the same from Zach Greinke tonight. Here's how Joe Madden will line him up tonight. Dexter Fowler once again out in center field. Jason Hayward in right field. Ben Zobrist at second. Anthony Rizzo down at first base with Chris Bryan at third. Former D-back Miguel Montero doing the catching. Jorge Soler filling in for Kyle Schwarber in left field. Madison Russell at shortstop and Kyle Hendricks the right-hander on the mound. Your Arizona Ford starting pitcher, he's Zach the Diamondback. Zach Greinke knocked around by the Rockies here on opening day and looking for a mulligan after allowing seven runs on nine hits and only four innings, including three home runs. Yeah, he had left a lot of pitches up in the strike zone. His manager Chip Hale uh, chose to give a lot of the credit to that Rockies offense. They were pretty good in that opening series, but Zach made a lot of mistakes and they made him pay. Eric Cooper our plate umpire roof and panels open set to go D backs and the Cubs as Dexter Fowler looks at ball one. Fowler off to a sensational start nine for 15 and four of those hits are for extra bases. But he hasn't faced Zach Greinke yet this year he struck out nine times in 18 at bats against Zach nine times. 
Just inside there, 2 0. Oh. Fowler has been an on base machine in the leadoff spot this year. He's reached base safely in 13 of his 19 plate appearances to begin the season. Two balls and one strike. There are the numbers career two for 18 with nine punch outs. Gene Segura at second base. Frankie got to get over there in a hurry. And a nice job by Zach to cover the bag. One down. Let's take a look at the Diamondbacks defensively. Our eye on defense is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Centers. Nice defensive play to start the ball game. Here's how Chip's going to line him up today. Osmani Tomas in left. Chris Owings out in center. David Peralta in right field. Brandon Drury getting his first start at third base. Nick Ahmed at short. Gene Segura at second base. Paul Goldschmidt at first. Wellington Castillo doing the catching for right hander Zach Greinke. Left hand hitting Jason Hayward in there now. I imagine Brandon Drury doesn't want to get too deep into this ball game without having something hit his way. You know, you'd like to get one just to get it out of the way, get involved in the flow of the game. Well, Chip Hale told us he would have to be creative to find spots for Drury's bat. We have seen him in the outfield as a pinch hitter. Now he's in there today at third. One and zero on Hayward. Jason Hayward four hits in 16 at bats to start his Cubs career after coming over from St. Louis on an eight year one hundred eighty four million dollar deal. He walked and singled last night. He was on base four times in Thursday series opener. We got a full house here today crowd still streaming in to Chase Field roof and panels open very comfortable here. Just a gorgeous night to be at the ballpark. This is hard hit to left center. A base hit for Hayward. Second baseman, number 18, Ben Zobrist. Ben Zobrist now. Five hits in 16 at bats on the season his first with the Cubs after he helped the Royals win a World Series last fall. One for seven in the series he was hitless last night. Strike one. Zobris did have an RBI last night. He walked three times in Thursday's ball game. They gave him a four year, $56 million deal in the offseason. He'll turn 35 next month. Frankie out ahead, 0 2. You don't usually fool Ben Zobris that badly. Boy, that change of fading away. Good down away action that time to a guy that makes pretty consistent contact. You can kind of hear Zach Greinke thinking out there, processing what he's seeing. Doesn't get the call from Eric Cooper. It's a ball and two strikes. You saw him ask Eric Cooper, uh, did you have that one off the plate? And just a little bit of late movement may have taken it just off that outside corner. It's a good call back there. That's a good pitch. You know, when you're ahead in the count, if you're going to miss, miss farther away. You've got the count in your favor. You've got a couple pitches to play with. Don't make a mistake in the middle. At worst, you get some weak contact and a ground ball double play. One two pitch. Missed away again, two and two. And when you talk about pitchers that have a good feel for pitching, it's exactly what you talked about. Zach Greinke throws the pitch. He knows the location. He watches how the hitter reacts to that pitch. 
and then makes up his mind. OK, where do I go next? Was he out in front of that pitch? Was he behind it? Was he taking all the way? And then he comes up with his game plan each at bat. Shook off Castillo a couple of times there. Keeps firing away at that same spot, but he hasn't hit it yet. Now the count is full three and two. I mean, he has a game plan going into the ball game. Each guy that he has a history against, he knows where they like the ball, where he wants to avoid, where he wants to throw. Uh, but then during the course of the at bat, you, know, you pitch according to what you see that hitter do. Three balls, two strikes. Hey, we're the runner at first. Hayward takes off and Zobrist hits it right in the hole. Hayward heads for third. Now Gene Segura stayed home that time. Nick Ahmed was the guy responsible for coverage at second base, so it was the shortstop that was breaking for the bag as Hayward. Took off towards second base, but Zober still able to get it by Gene Segura into right field for a base hit. A pair of one out singles have runners on the corners for Chicago. One down for Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo, five for 15 to start the year. Two homers, he's knocked in nine. Tied a career high Thursday when he had six RBIs in one game. They are shading Rizzo a bit toward the right hand side. Ahmed the shortstop almost behind the second base bag. Strike one. Take a look at our Valley Honda key to the ball game tonight. Robbie Ray Tyler Clipper Daniel Hudson and Brad Ziegler last night were able to muddle the middle of this Cubs lineup. Zobris Rizzo and Bryant a combined 0 for 12. Against D backs pitchers last night, Zach Greinke and the bullpen hoping to do the same tonight. Wellington Castillo is going to have to try and think along with Zach Greinke as any catcher would, but with Zach, that process is certainly at a higher level and accelerates, so they want to get together here in what's already a big spot in the ballgame. Rizzo last night 0 for 4 he struck out twice. Better that time uh, throughout this series uh, Diamondbacks pitchers have tried to pound Rizzo inside we've talked about it at length he stands right on that inside line of the left handed batters box. He gets hit by a lot of pitches but most teams try to attack him inside. Diamondbacks no exception. You see those hands and wrists right out over the plate. Well, he sets up inside again. And this guy's done a lot of damage against the Diamondbacks in his young career. 31 games, seven homers. He's knocked in 27. to third one nothing Cubs three straight singles for Chicago the change up that just didn't quite get far enough off the plate that time and look at that swing by Rizzo you talk about a defensive swing with two strikes just protect on pitches that are too close to the strike zone to take and that time he grounds one into center field for a base hit. Three straight singles now still just one out and the batter for the Cubs is Chris Bryant. By Ahmed it's off the glove. Zobrist will score it rolls into left center Rizzo takes the turn and Bryant heads for second he is in there.
Oh, the smoke right there. Slider in the middle of the plate. Location has been bad in this first inning already for Zach Greinke. Just looking for that release point so he can get the ball out there on the corners at the knees. Hit extremely hard off the thumb of Nick Ahmed's glove and on out into left center field for another RBI hit. Well, Zach Greinke said after his bumpy debut here Monday night that usually in the past with one bad outing he gets over it pretty quick. If it happens a couple of times he starts to think about maybe he has to work on something and maybe he does four straight hits with one out have made it two nothing Cubs. They have Rizzo at third Brian at second for former D back rate Miguel Montero. Montero did not get in on the fun uh, the first game of this series as his teammates were banging the ball all over the ballpark. He took an 0 for 6, but as we said at the time, he was a good teammate. Somebody has to make the out. Miggy ended four innings Thursday night. Two for 11 with a home run to start the year. Frankie behind two balls and no strikes. Miggy has homered twice off Zach Cranky in the past. Frankie now with 20 pitches. Damage right now. Two already in for the Cubs. Two other base runners in scoring position. Good news is he's working to the bottom of this Cubs order. Montero followed by Jorge Soler. Fly ball left field. Tomas at the track at the wall and he runs it down. Rizzo will tag and score. And it's 3 0 Chicago, the RBI for Miguel Montero. Well, we saw Miguel Montero in that first game I talked about when he went 0 for 6, was really over swinging, trying to lift the ball to right field. Yeah, the Diamondbacks fans know when Miggy's staying on the ball and driving it to the opposite field, that's when he's at his best. A sack fly right there. Three runs in now, two outs. Brian still at second. Jorge Soler. Single last night. He was one for four. Hard to Drury at third. He bobbles it. Brian will stop at third. And Soler's aboard. Well, you mentioned it, Bob. You were hoping, and Brandon was likely too, that he'd get one early. And he had his chance right there. Yeah, he wishes it would have been hit a little softer and maybe taken a couple of bounces before it got to him. Solaire hits that ball like a bullet. Big hop came up and hit him in the heel of the hand. Got far enough away, he's got no play. E5. And Addison Russell steps up, the eighth man to bat in this Cubs first against Zach Greinke. Russell, two hits and 13 at bats to start the year. He walked and was hit by a pitch last night. You see Wellington Castillo step out in front of home plate with runners on the corners for the Cubs. Uh, should Solaire break for second base, everybody needs to know where Wellington's going to throw the ball. Either straight through to second base, maybe throw straight down to third base and try to get Bryant, or possibly just hold on to the ball. First inning ends for Zach Cranky, but the Cubs get three. Bottom one coming up from Chase Field.
Well, for the third game in a row, the Diamondbacks will try and uh, come from behind against these Chicago Cubs. Chip Hale's D-backs began the day second in the National League in hits behind only the L.A. Dodgers. Here's how Chip's going to line them up here tonight. Gene Segura once again leading off. Why not? Chris Owings batting second out in center field. Paul Goldschmidt at first base. David Peralta in right field. Wellington Castillo doing the catching. Asmani Tomas out in left. Brandon Drury at third. Zach Greinke batting eighth and pitching. And Nick Ahmed the shortstop batting ninth. Your Arizona Ford starter for the Cubs. 26 year old right hander Kyle Hendricks an Ivy League guy. He pitched at Dartmouth. And has been pretty dependable in two big league seasons with the Cubs. Last year 32 starts. Won eight games at a 3.95 ERA. Never a flashy guy, but more often than not, he finds a way to get the job done. Sinker cutter change up mostly. He does throw an occasional breaking ball, but uh, he's just going to try to move that ball around, keep it out of the middle of the plate. Gene Segura, what a start it's been. 11 for 22 in his first five games. Two doubles, a triple, three home runs. And tied for the major league lead in extra base hits at the start of play today. One thing we may notice about Kyle Hendricks tonight, his changeup, a right handed changeup, if there's any lateral movement, usually it's into a right handed hitter away from a left. Bounce to Addison Russell at shortstop. But Hendricks is able to cut his changeup and get it to move away from a right hander. A look at the Cubs, our eye on defense, brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Jorge hey, Soler in left, Dexter Fowler in center, the gold glover Jason Hayward over in right field. It'll be Chris Bryant and Addison Russell on the left side of the infield, with Ben Zobrist and Anthony Rizzo on the right side. Miguel Montero behind the plate for Kyle Hendricks. Another start in center field for Chris Owings tonight, batting in the two hole. CO was the one who raced around from second base as a pinch runner last night to score the winning run on the Asmani Tomas walk off single. He's behind 0 2. CO three hits in 15 at bats this year. He's knocked in two. For a big guy. He's an enormous guy down there at third base, and he's a lot more athletic than you think he will be. First baseman. I would imagine he was a pretty good basketball player in high school. He moves really well, controls that big long frame. Fortunately for him, got a high hop that time, came up well, about knee high, didn't have to go all the way down, but uh, strong throw on the move just in time to get Chris Owens. He's 6'5, 230. Here's another big guy, Paul Goldschmidt for the Diamondbacks. Hendricks throwing strikes at 0-1. Goldie five hits in 17 at bats. Paul has six RBIs and had a pair of RBI singles last night in the win over these Cubs. And boy, his contribution last night enormous. Diamondbacks were down two nothing. Only two base hits through the first five innings. But it was Goldie who drove in the D-backs first run in the sixth and then Paul tied it with a clutch two out RBI single in the eighth. Two balls and a strike to Goldie. Got too much or not enough pine tar. <laughs> Working on that grip, trying to find that magic spot on the handle of that bat. No, well, didn't find it that time. Kyle Hendricks gets three runs and has a one-two-three bottom of the first. Diamondbacks down three nothing.
Diamondbacks down three nothing. Cubs with three in the first against Zach Greinke, who appears to be having location issues once again out there. Kyle Hendricks, the Cubs pitcher, the only guy who did not bat in the Chicago first to lead off the second. And there was a Ken Rosenthal report that Greinke Monday pitched with the flu. Chip Hale the next day denied that was the case and joked that he thought what was really bothering Zach were the Rockies at bats and the location of his pitches. Yeah. And that same illness seems to be in place again. Peralta trying to get Ke Hendricks at first throws it away. Castillo's there to back it up and Kyle Hendricks is aboard. Well, it's worth a shot. We know David Peralta has a big arm out there in right field. Occasionally you catch that pitcher jogging down the first baseline really proud of himself for putting the ball in play and you can throw him out at first but you can clearly see Kyle Hendricks got down that line. Fortunately Wellington Castillo backing up the play right there. No further damage. Dexter Fowler grounded out to lead off the ball game. Brandon Drury creeping in at third. Fowler squares and takes strike one. After Zach's loss Monday night Hall of Famer Pedro Martinez got on the Twitter and Pedro tweeted that Colorado knows something nobody is talking about. They felt too comfortable against Greinke and Pedro suggesting that Zach Greinke is tipping his pitches and that the Rockies knew what was coming. Greinke after all did give up three home runs in one game for the first time in seven years. He was asked about that after the ball game and said it's possible he probably wouldn't even bother looking at it however he just threw too many pitches away early in the game and didn't throw in enough he said. That's part of a pitching coach's job uh, when a guy gets banged around the way Greinke did against the Rockies you go back and look at the video and you look for things is he tipping anything is he setting up differently on this pitch as opposed to that pitch and I'm sure Mike Butcher looked at it even though Zach said he did not I'm sure he took a look at it as well. He strikes out Fowler first strikeout for Zach one away in the second. Our buddy Kurt Schilling used to say he hopes that the other team thinks they have something because <laughs> then you can really play with their minds. Greinke sort of had the idea that maybe the other team just felt a little too comfortable in the box and he thought that was more of a possibility than tipping pitches and as we mentioned maybe didn't throw inside enough so we'll see if he does that here tonight Hayward singled and scored his first time up Yeah, I would tend to agree with that obviously some mistakes he made some mistakes up and over the heart of the plate but really didn't come inside hard to any of the Rocky hitters everything was middle of the plate or away. Well it's taken 30 pitches to get four outs. Hendricks the pitcher at first one away. That's foul. Well, we've already seen at least three curveballs here in this inning, trying to really incorporate all of his pitches early in the ball game. Just when you give up four straight base hits in the first, maybe you should start using all your weapons early. Well, Greinke eight career starts against Chicago. A four and two record, a three seven eight ERA. He faced this Cubs lineup only once last year when he was an L.A. Dodger, and worked six innings of scoreless baseball and gave up just three hits. He gave up four hits in the first inning alone tonight. Light sky up there for Nick Ahmed. Nick's got the high socks going tonight two yeah. down. Ben Zobris now. Second baseman Ben Zobris. Zobrist had one of those Cubs first inning hits he singled and scored.
remember Zach was just working him away 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 either on the outside corner or farther off the plate eventually Zobris went out there and took a pitch that was probably down at the borderline of the strike zone to get his base hit goes outside again he is really staying away from Zobrist. Zobris back in that first inning. You see this Fox tracks everything away and down. Even the last pitch that was hit. Not a horrible pitch down there at the bottom of the strike zone. Just good hitting by Zobras. Setting up there again on 2-0. He turned on that one, couldn't keep it fair though. Now that's why you try to stay away from Ben Zobrist. He's got some pull power to right field, right center. If you can force him to hit that ball to the opposite field, he'll get his base hits out that way, but he's probably not going to drive the ball in the gap or out of the ballpark. First walk issued by Zach Cranky. And that'll bring up Anthony Rizzo with two on and two out. First baseman, Anthony Rizzo. I'm sure Chip Hale is just hoping for a nice quick out here with Rizzo at the plate. But when I used to manage and the pitcher was running the bases with two outs in the inning and he's at second base, I always rooted for a base hit to the outfield and have that third base coach send the pitcher. Collision play at the plate. Come on. Really take it out of that opposing pitcher. <laughs> Rizzo had an RBI single and scored in the first. Fly ball, right field. It'll stay in the yard for Peralta. And Zach Greinke strands two. D backs trail it 3 0. D-backs down three as we head to the bottom of the second. I'm Kate Longworth. Well, coming into this series, the D-backs knew they could use the Cubs as a measuring stick. And I sat down with Tony LaRusa to talk about Arizona's tough schedule. 
schedule right out of the gate. He joked with me that at the end of April, the Diamondbacks will certainly be battle tested, but he said he's a guy that sees the glasses half full. So rather than dwell on the tough competition, he wants to see his players rise, raise their level of competition. After all, to be the best, you have to beat the best. And these guys are supposed to be the best. Joe Madden, Chicago Cubs. David Peralta leads off the bottom of the second against Kyle Hendricks. D-backs down 3 nothing. And David, eight hits in 20 at bats to start the year, including four hits for extra bases. It is a brutal April schedule for the Diamondbacks. They opened up with the Rockies, and we all know how those guys can get going offensively. Now four against the Cubs. Then you have your only day off of the month on Monday. But that'll be spent traveling to Los Angeles to start a 10 game road trip. And the Diamondbacks are in the division almost all of April and when they're not they're playing the three best teams in the NL Central the Cardinals the Pirates and the Cubs. So it is a tough stretch out of the gate here in 2016. Well, not exactly the start you would pick but uh, you got to play them sometime and the good news is at some point in the future you're going to bump up against some of the guys that uh, maybe aren't quite as loaded as this Cubs team. Dodgers and Giants play a great ball game today. L.A. ended up winning an extra innings 3 2 at San Francisco back and forth they went Madison Bumgarner in that ball game hit a home run off Clayton Kershaw for the second time in his career as Peralta strikes out. Jeff, we talked about Hendricks can make it fade away from the lefty, cut it into the lefty. Kind of unusual for a guy to throw an off speed pitch uh, that moves both directions like his changeup does. He's retired all four he's faced. Here's the catcher, Wellington Castillo. Well, he three for 16, all three hit singles. It was Castillo who singled and walked last night and Wellington had the base hit in the ninth inning off Trevor Cahill that put the winning run on base for the D-backs and Chris Owings who was the pinch runner for Castillo came around to score on Yasmani Tomas's walk off winner and Tomas is on deck. That's in there for a strike two and one. He backs wearing the uniform of the day the evolution the black alternate jersey. The black gradient a cap with that sort of red design on the top of it. We are going to dazzle the opposition this year <laughs> different colors fashion statements. That new snake head baseball logo on the sleeve there looks great. Two and two. You guys had the uh, chance to do that when you were managing. You had all kinds of things going on there. Yeah, we had a few different uh, combinations. We had purple, we had black, we had the vests. Nothing like this. Nobody has anything like this. Two and two. Bouncer to Russell at shortstop on the short hop. Time now for. Il Tanque, the tank. Yasmani Tomas, who had his first career walk off hit last night. This ninth inning single that was about Adam's apple high, said Chappelle. Uh, former D back Trevor K here. Now, what do you put on an advance report for Yasmani Tomas? Don't, don't throw it at his neck. <laughs> He's got that Vlad Guerrero quality about his pitch selection. Uh, Tomas four for 15 at the plate to start the year including two doubles. He's also struck out five times in those 15 at bats. Tomas was all shy last year according to David Peralta. David said Yasmani yeah, wouldn't talk much with anybody last season but now. Peralta says that Tomas looks like he feels part of the family here. He's feeling better. He looks really good. He's in shape, and his teammates are excited about it. And last night certainly certainly went a long way in emphasizing that Yasmani part of the gang now. 
And certainly some familiarity this year. You know, you think about last season, everything he did was new. Every ballpark he went to was a new experience. Every city he went to was a new experience. Familiar with his teammates, familiar with the league. Should be much more relaxed this year. There's the year of assimilation to the league and the culture and the country. Well, a lot to take on for a young man who's just turned 25. Right to Zobrist at second. And so far, Kyle Hendricks, six up, six down. He's got a three-nothing lead. Hendricks has been perfect as three to nothing Cubs as we head to the top of the third. Hey fans, you can customize your own ticket package with a D backs mini plan. Choose from big games, including the Yankee series in May, bobblehead nights, holidays, or any combination you choose. Buy now at dbacks.com. Well, location, Bob, has uh, been an issue again here tonight for Zach Greinke so far. Down three nothing. He gave up three in the first against these Cubs. And Chris Bryant leads off the Chicago third. Frankie so far three runs allowed on five hits a walk and a strikeout. Diamondbacks have the shift on the left hand side Gene Segura the second baseman on the shortstop side of the bag and Brandon Drury right on the line at third. We talked about the location for Zach Greinke in that first inning. He made a couple mistakes right in the middle of the plate, including this pitch to Jason Hayward. That's not a bad piece of hitting there by Ben Zobras going down and getting that sinker. Defensive swing that time by Rizzo, but then once again a slider that rolls up there in the middle of the plate to Chris Bryan. Bryan knocked that for an RBI double. But Grinky strikes him out. Second strikeout for Zach. Good start here to the third. And Wellington Castillo is behind the plate tonight, was catching Grinky in just about all his Cactus League games. And he said the one thing that really surprised him was on days when Grinky was fine tuning, didn't have that really good fastball command, he would still be out there competing the best he can to give you a chance to win. And Wellington said that really opened his eyes. You could see why Grinky has earned the respect that he has. He didn't have his fastball. But just kept competing and competing with his other stuff. And he's out there tonight trying to find something that works against these Cubs. And competing is what you have to do after you fall behind early in the ballgame. We've seen this Diamondbacks offense and their ability to get up off the mat and make something happen in the middle or later parts of the ballgame. So stop the bleeding right there. Give your offense a chance to get you back in the ballgame. Miguel Montero. Lifts it in the air, deep left center field, a long run for Owens. He won't get there. Tomas has it. Montero heads for second. 
And he is in there with a double. Doesn't seem to be any wind to speak of out there. That just sort of hung up there in left center field. That ball hung up there for a long time. I think Chris Owings must have been shading a few steps over into right center from Montero because he had a long run. Tomas looked like he was uh, going to let Chris Owings take it after the collision. We saw the first game of this series in yeah. left center. It's understandable that outfielders are a little more careful on those tweeners. Jorge Soler. Reached on an error by Brandon Drury at third base his first time up. And this guy put on a batting practice exhibition. The type of which I'm not sure I've ever seen here. He hit one into the bar in Friday's front row grill. Not the restaurant area up there above left field. The bar above all those tables. See where that bar is? Where the people are waving. Yeah. yeah. Up there. He hit it right there. Among others. Among others. Yeah. Is right. Yeah. <laughs> he dented the ballpark a couple of times. And it's very much an all or nothing guy. He will almost always either homer or strike out. There will be days at Wrigley Field, especially later this summer when the weather heats up and the wind turns around and comes out of the south and blows straight out of Wrigley, where I would pay money just to go watch batting practice. Yeah. Because these guys put on a show everywhere they go. Had a little wind. Look out. It's a traveling road show. That wind starts blowing out toward the lake at home. They might have to buy more buildings across the street. <laughs> Third strike out for Granky. Two down now. Joe Madden said in game one of this series he was really happy with his offense because they weren't chasing pitches out of the zone. Shortstop. Well, we've Addison, seen a couple of the Cubs Russell. go down swinging on pitches out of the strike zone here tonight. Well, Zach trying to strand that one out double Montero at second two down for Russell who grounded out his first time up. Yeah, I'm sure this is a strategy conversation. How aggressive do we want to be with Addison Russell with Kyle Hendricks in the on deck circle. First base open. Looks like a negotiation here. How do you think about this. I don't know. All right. Well how about that. Catching this guy must be like going to a, an honors arithmetic class or something. You're in advanced calculus. Yeah, your head hurts at the end of the <laughs> night if you're trying to call pitches for this guy. <laughs> it's a head 0 1. Which is why I always work so well with Rick Russell. What are you saying? He threw a, pit, a game in Philadelphia one time. I believe it was 90 pitches. 88 of them were sinkers. <laughs> so either gonna, you're either both really <laughs> smart or not so much. One, 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 <laughs> one. 88 times. <laughs> what do you want to call here? How about one? Big Daddy. You, know, you had to throw down a slider every now and then just to get him to shake his head. Now, were you uh, on a team when they were? He was on the same team with his brother. They were both Cubs at one point. Yeah, Rick they, and Paul, yeah, right? Paul and Rick, yeah. No, I never played with the two of them. I never played against Paul, but uh, was teammates with Rick. Rick and Paul Russell. Seems like forever the Cubs had the wrong brother. You know, they're <laughs> all those teams in the 70s and 60s. They just kind of rolled that way for a while. Two balls and one strike. And we talked about it in spring training the rebuilding process that Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer undertook when the, they took over leadership of this Cubs organization, kind of broke it right down to the studs and started over again, which is something the Cubs organization was never fond of. Hmm. They would tend to sign free agents a year or two after their prime and pay them big money for very little results. Came inside on Russell and got the strike call from Eric Cooper. Two and two now. But now they have so many good young players, they don't have spots for all of them. And they have spent some money to bring in some pitching. Last year, John Lester. This year, John Lackey. 
Two and two on Addison Russell. Got him. Three strikeouts in the inning. For Zach Greinke, that's four for the ball game. He works around the one out double. He got Bryant. He got Solaire. He gets Russell. D backs down three nothing. D-backs still looking for their first knock of the ball game as we head to the bottom of the third. Hey fans, a D-backs home run tonight means a free jumbo jack tomorrow at participating Jack in the Box locations with the purchase of a large drink. Well, the D-backs still looking for their first base hit against right-hander Kyle Hendricks, who has retired all six he's faced. Brandon Drury, the third baseman tonight, leads off the Arizona third. Right now, the third ball. Brandon one for seven on the year with three strikeouts and after a sensational spring training during which he hit about 390 with four home runs. It's been a skittish start out of the game for Brandon with inconsistent at bats and playing time so hopefully this will get him going here tonight. Because he looked phenomenal during the Cactus League. Four homers, 10 doubles, 13 RBIs guys in 27 games this spring. Reaches out and drops it into left. There you go, Brandon, a base hit. First hit tonight for the lead backs. Lead off man aboard in the third. This adjustment to his swing in progress. He got out there on his front foot, saw that slow breaking ball working away from him, extended his swing, got out there and hooked it into left field for his first knock of the season. He was doing this all day today in batting practice, and Mark Grace was behind the cage, just kind of leaning on the cage and talking as Gracie always does, and he just said, yeah, do that all day. We'll take four of those tonight. <laughs> And sure enough, there it is, a base hit to lead off the third. Granky squares now, batting eight tonight, and drops it down foul. Tonight's Cold Hard Facts brought to you by Clean, Crisp, Coors Light. Zach Granky, most home runs among active pitchers. Bumgarner homered. Bumgarner, that's a miss. <laughs> I'll work on that. But anyway, he homered today off Kershaw in San Francisco. And a Granky has homered six times in his career. Second time that Mad Bum has taken Kershaw deep in their careers. You should have seen Kershaw's reaction on the mound. He just, oh, not again. <laughs> Something to that effect. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the Dodgers came back and won that game. They beat the Giants 3 2. Rockies hosting the Padres tonight in the NL West. That game is scoreless in the third at Coors Field. Which means Trevor Story is yet to homer. Give him time. 
Two and one. Kyle Hendricks is a strike thrower out there. He doesn't walk many batters at all. In fact, last year, he totaled more strikeouts than base hits allowed. His strikeout rate jumped way up. But he was a little more vulnerable to the home run ball last year than he'd been in the past, being in the strike zone so often. That's fouled off, and it's two and two. And Hendricks, at one point just before the All-Star break last year, put together three straight starts without giving up a run. He had a 22 and a third inning scoreless streak going. Did seem to lose some effectiveness as the season wore on. His ERA after the All-Star break jumped up nearly a full run, but for the most part, he was very effective last year. And has been so far tonight. Frankie gets it down. Rizzo will get the out at first. They move Drury along. Wow, Hendrick had 17 no decisions last year. Seven of those he left the ball game with the lead, and the bullpen gave it up. So his eight and seven record, very, very deceiving. Nick Albert. Six hits in 17 at bats to start the year, including a double and a home run. He's up there with Brandon Drury at second base and one out. Now for Gene Segura. Segura grounded out to lead off the ball game for the Diamondbacks. Second baseman, Gene Segura. Gene Segura three hits last night, including two doubles. He scored twice, and he is the first player in Diamondbacks history with multiple hits in each of his first five games of the year. And if Segura picks up another pair of hits tonight, he would become just the fourth National League player ever with multiple hits in each of his first six games of a season. The other three were Ty Tyson of the 1927 New York Giants, Henry Aaron in 59, and Barry Larkin in 1990. So he'd be in good company. There's a strike at 0 and 2. The hit so far this season, just like in the spring, have been coming in bunches for Gene Segura. Could use one right here to get on the board, down 3 0. In the air for Hayward. Kyle Hendricks strands Drury at second, and he keeps it a 3 0 Cubs lead.
downtown Phoenix. Roof and panels open at Chase Field. Hey fans, this week only T-Mobile customers can get a free season-long subscription to MLB.tv Premium. Just go to T-Mobile.com slash MLB. Sign up now and you'll be able to catch every moment on America's fastest growing LTE network. The pitcher Kyle Hendricks leads off the Chicago fourth against Zach Greinke who so far has given up three runs on six hits. Walked one and struck out four. Hendricks Fowler Hayward nine one and two in the Cub fourth. Saw that meeting between Wellington Castillo and Zach Greinke during the Addison Russell at bat, or before the Addison Russell at bat, and this is why you attack the number eight hitter. If you can retire him to end the inning, you get the pitcher up there to lead off the next inning. Ideally, you retire him quickly and go to work on the top of the order with one out in the inning and nobody on base. A lot of shake-offs tonight for Zach Greinke. Looking in at those signs, sometimes, sometimes those are intentional, right? Even with nobody on mm -hmm. base. Yeah, you just want the hitter to think a little bit. You know, sometimes a catcher will actually put down a sign or shake his own head to get the pitcher to shake his head no. The more you can get that hitter thinking, the better chance you have of getting him out. Walter well, Austin once said, "A full mind is an empty bat." <laughs> <laughs> I've pretty much operated on that premise my whole life. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true, you know. It's all about routine and taking your batting practice and working on your mechanics as a hitter, and then just see the ball and react to what you see. Don't think too much. You can only hurt the ball. You court. can only hurt the team. You know, he's up there against the Ivy League guys we mentioned, Kyle Hendricks, a Dartmouth alum. There's strike three, five strikeouts for Zach, including three in a row now. He has struck out four of the last five Cubs he's faced. Center fielder, Dexter Fowler. Cutter right in the middle of the plate. Kyle Hendricks heads on back to the dugout. Just like we hoped for, one out, nobody on base. For Dexter Fowler, who has grounded out and struck out 0 for 2. Fowler a switch hitter better from the right hand side he hit almost 330 as a right hand hitter last year but most of his power comes from the left hand batter's box 13 of his 17 home runs as a left hand hitter. Speaking of smart guys Dexter Fowler was recruited out of high school in Georgia to play basketball at Harvard. He played both sports in high school baseball and basketball before he was drafted by the Rockies he was going to go play college baseball at Miami. Could have gone to play basketball at Harvard. We're surrounded by smart guys up here it's a good thing. <laughs> we need all the help we can get exactly. Here's a strike on three and oh. Dennis Lamb. I don't know where we'd be without Dennis Lamb. Holding the fort together up here. Of course, Ralph Kelso. Every time I have a problem, I go to Ralph Kelso. The great sage of the Western Valley. Drops that in there for a strike. Hold on, Dexler. It's a full three and two. Breaking ball. Fowler thought it was up. It just does catch the top of the zone. Not exactly where you like to throw that curveball, but it definitely was in the zone. Eric Cooper said it was in there, so here it is, three and two. Second walk issued by Grinky. Fowler's aboard with one out for Hayward. Right fielder Jason Hayward.
Hayward has singled and scored a run. He popped out his last time up. This is the combination that Joe Madden really likes at the top of his order Fowler and Hayward. He loves to mix his lineups. He's a kind of a maniac about it in fact but he did say this spring he will do it again this year. He loved the consistency with Fowler one Hayward two. That type of hitter in the two spot after he came over from St. Louis he, he got him now and he's just going to run with it here. Wants to keep him in the comfort zone because he's performed so well batting second in some of his other stops Atlanta St. Louis. No one too. Well, when your leadoff hitter is getting on base as much as Fowler has in the early going this year it leaves that big hole on the right side of the infield for a left handed batter that can pull the ball hard to that right side. Hayward has hit second more than anywhere else in his career and done very well there. So Madden says the debate. That's three through nine. One and two, pretty solid. Chases that one in the dirt. Six strikeouts for Granke. And two down in the fourth. The Cub hitter chasing out of the zone here. Change up on the two strike count that ball bounced right off of home plate blocked by Wellington Castillo for the second out of the inning. And remember how they've worked Ben Zobris so far he has singled walked and scored a run everything to Zobrist away 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 through two at bats. Back out there again to start this at bat. Missed the spot. One and zero. Oh. Zobris' first inning single was on a three-two pitch. And he walked in the second, so he's seen a ton of pitches here already tonight. Change up for a called strike right there. And when you're behind in the count, you want to get that change up close to the strike zone. When you're ahead in the count, you want to bounce in the dirt like we saw him do to Jason Hayward. Why so? Well, because it, when the, the count is in the hitter's favor, he's probably hunting fastballs. Chris Owens, right center. See how won't get there. It's off the wall. Fowler will score. And it's an RBI double for Ben Zobrist. Four nothing Cubs. He belted it to the deepest part of the ballpark in right center field. First base right down Anthony the middle. Rizzo. And for the first time, Chris Owings might have been fooled a little bit. Took a very shallow line to that ball, then had to retreat all the way back to the warning track and play it on a hop. I don't believe he could have caught it anyway, but that's the first not perfect line we've seen Chris Owings take on a ball hit out there near center field. Anthony Rizzo, the run is in. Two outs and Zobrist at second. Rizzo had an RBI single and scored a run as part of that three run cub first. He flied out his last time up one for two.
Trying to come inside again there, missed again, and it's two and one. You know, we talk a lot about pitching inside and making batters uncomfortable. That doesn't mean you throw at their head, doesn't mean you drill them, but what we saw right there, a fastball inside near the knees of Anthony Rizzo made him move his feet. That makes you uncomfortable as a hitter. And behind in the count here again, two and one. I believe Wellington Castillo called for a changeup once again. Behind in the count, Zach Greinke's behind in the count. Anthony Rizzo is ahead in the count. This is where most hitters look to drive a fastball. And on the hands, well, he'll give it a look, but it's in the seats, two and two now. And back to the fastball instead after Rizzo called timeout and stepped out of the box. Zach thought about it for a minute or two and came back with a 92 mile an hour heater instead of the changeup they were going to throw. Two and two. Did he check? Yes, he did, says Gary Cedarstrom. And it's a full count, three balls and two strikes. You saw Wellington Castillo there, that ball in the dirt. Tag first and ask for an appeal later. Just in case that is called a swing, you want to make sure you get that tag on Anthony Rizzo and don't give him an opportunity to run down to first base. Ball four. That's three walks from Granke. Two on, two out now for Chris Bryant. Third baseman, Chris Bryant. And the pitch count is moving up. Gave up three runs on four hits in that first inning. One run in here in the fourth. He has given up a double, a walk two, and struck out two. Brian has an RBI double and a strikeout, one for two. Segura, the second baseman, right behind the runner Zobrist. And Drury on the line at third. A good shot of Gene Segura breaking in behind. Ben Zobrist out there at second base with that pull shift on. He's in a perfect position to sneak in behind that base runner at second. Chris Bryant will strike out. He led the league in strikeouts last year, punched out 30% of the time he was up there. Deer just popped into my head. Well, I'm thinking about one at all. Chris Bryant, yeah. a guy that uh, hit a lot of home runs. He struck out a whole bunch, usually carried a very low batting average, but always dangerous. Big number 45, Rob Deer for the Brewers, played for the Tigers, the Red Sox for a while. Bowen's in center. CO at the track. And Zach Cranky strands two, but the Cubs get one more. They lead it 4 nothing.
Lee backs trail the Cubs for nothing. I have to take a look back in history presented by Geico on this date. 1965, President Lyndon B. Johnson joined more than 47,000 fans for the opening of Harris County Dome Stadium, otherwise known as the Astrodome. One of the legendary sporting facilities in the history of this country, really. A lot of great games are played in that ballpark. And it still stands. The disaster dome. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, brother. Chris Owings. You didn't like it there, huh? Not very much. What was the problem? Uh, uh, multiple problems. <laughs> well, name one. Nolan Ryan. Well, <laughs> Mike Scott. Been tough in any ballpark. <laughs> yeah, sure. You make a good case. Yeah, it was a big. Obviously, the AstroTurf was not good on those of us with bad knees. And I've told this story in the past, too. Uh, when you would take a cab to the ballpark or the team bus would come to the ballpark, they would drop you off at the loading dock. Then you would enter the stadium near the dumpsters. And you would get this garbage smell in your nose that you couldn't get out for weeks. I can still smell the Astrodome. If I close my eyes and think about it, I can still smell it. it feels like San Francisco with all the dumpsters out behind left field and the garlic fries and the seagulls and the whole thing. <laughs> Co knocks it into left center. He takes a big turn. Owens thinking about second. He'll put on the brakes. The leadoff single, just the second hit for the Diamondbacks against Kyle Hendricks. That's an almost standard operating procedure to take this kind of turn around the first base pass. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of definitions for playing the game the right way, but yeah, for me as a base runner, it's constantly putting pressure on the defense. Run as hard as you can until they make you stop. Oh, you've got the leadoff man aboard, and now the sharp end of the Diamondback order coming up. Goldie Peralta Castillo behind him, trying to get something going down 4 0. Goldie struck out his first time up. Of course, Goldie grew up in Houston, and he was a big Astros fan as a kid. Bagwell and Biggio, the Killer Bees, those were his guys. In my day, it was uh, Jose Cruz and Enos Cabell. Mm -hmm. Billy Dorn. Yeah, second baseman. Alan Ashby, who does their games now. Great Alan Ashby, catcher for a long time. A lot of good players on those teams. Art Howe, Terry Poole. Of course, when Rusty Staub started there, they were the Colt 45s. Right. Along with Joe Morgan. Owings takes off. He's in there. Stolen base for CO, who was running wild all through the Cactus League season. And that pitch is a ball to Goldie, so it's 3 0. Had a good jump, took a quick peek over his left shoulder just to see what happened at home plate, but easily in ahead of the throw. All right, I'll put some pressure on. Jason Hayward, right field corner near the line, and it's out of play. He can't quite get there, ran out of room. That's why I'm guessing, Bob, I always hear it's a lot tougher to play a corner outfield spot in one regard than it is center field because the ball has spin on it when it's coming at you. Yeah, a lot more, if you want to call it English, right handed batter hitting a ball to right field like Goldie just did it's always going to be slicing away from that right fielder as he chases it into foul territory same thing for a left handed batter hitting a ball to left field full count three and two oh Anderson Russell takes a base hit away The Cubs sensational 22 year old shortstop. The ball got in on Goldie just a little bit. Didn't quite barrel it up, but still a nice play by Addison Russell ranging over into that hole. So one away in the fourth. David Peralta struck out his first time up against Hendricks. Down 
bounce to Zobrist at second. Owens in third, two down. Well, Hendricks had a man on second with one out in the third inning. Got a ground ball and a fly ball to get out of it. And now he's got Owings at third base. Two down for Wellington Castillo. Castillo grounded out his first time up. Just three for 17 to start the year. All three hit singles. Kyle Hendricks does not have great velocity. The fastball averaged just under 90 last year, but he can move it around up there. Curveball, cutter, sinker, change up. Here it is. Topped out tonight at 88 so far. Falls behind on Castillo, 3 0. You would think a guy who throws a pitch that, or pitches that move as much as he does, would have trouble commanding them, but he's usually in the strike zone. It's subtle movement, though. You know, it's just, just enough to get the ball off the barrel of the bat. Ball four, first walk. You know, I've talked about that cut changeup that Kyle Hendricks throws, and uh, it is unusual for a right-handed pitcher to have his changeup go away from a right-handed hitter. Usually, it fades back inside, but this is one of those cut changeups. Ball starts on the outer third of the plate, moves a little farther away. Wellington takes it for a ball, but uh, that, that's really an unusual pitch that most hitters aren't used to seeing. Yeah, usually about 80% of the time it's sinker changeup with that weird movement on it. So they're on the corners, two down for Yasmani Tomas, who grounded out in his first at bat tonight. You know, talking about a changeup that moves. Sometimes if a guy throws a split finger for a changeup, he can make it go both ways depending on finger pressure. You put a little more pressure on your index finger, that ball will move down and in. You put a little more pressure on your middle finger and the ball will move away. It's amazing how much thought goes into grips and grip pressure. It's amazing to watch pitchers when they come out every day for their work. They go down the left field line, the Diamondbacks pitchers, and they play catch every day. And if you watch them, they're always messing around with grips, showing each other. How do you hold that? What which finger do you put the pressure on? Where's your thumb underneath the ball? Just fine tuning that arsenal. We had a long conversation yesterday with Shelby Miller in the latest edition of D-Backs podcast, which is available to listen to right now on iTunes and D-Backs.com. And he talked about that a lot. That one gets behind Miggy. Here comes Owens. Diamondbacks are on the board. It's 4 1. Maybe a little too much pressure that time from Kyle Hendricks. Wild pitch. So now we'll run in. Castillo at second. Two and two on Tomas. Called strike three. Eric Cooper rings him up. But the Diamondbacks get one. We are through four. And it's a four one ball game. Hey. Yeah. All right.
to start the fifth inning. Fans tomorrow. The D backs wrap up the series against the Cubs. Shelby Miller on the mound against Jake Arietta. Plus, a special tribute to Joe Gargiola on his career, family, and what he has contributed to the community and the Diamondbacks. Coverage begins at 12:30 with the D backs live pregame show on Fox Sports Arizona. As we broadcast this ball game to you from the Joe Gargiola broadcast booth here at Chase Field. Miguel Montero leads off the Chicago fifth against Zach Greinke now a 4 1 ball game. Montero is knocked in a run with a sacrifice fly he doubled his last time up. And there's the strike going on. Eighty pitches for Granky, fifty-one for strikes. Goldie, a high hop. That one kicked up almost over his head. Granky's there, one away. Well, that's one of those plays that he just makes look easy. That's probably a lot tougher than we think. Yeah, unfortunately, Paul's playing deep down there at first Left base. Fielder. He's able to Four handle that away. bad hop that looked like it was going to go over his head into right field. And Zach Greinke always gets over there in good shape to cover the bat. A couple of gold glovers hooking up there. One down for Jorge Soler, who reached on an error by Brandon Drury at third. He struck out his last time up. Frankie so far has given up four runs on seven hits. He's walked three and struck out six. That was a special pitch right there. Slow breaking ball that time by Zach Granke. Look at that drop. That's called a curve ball, but uh, back in the olden days, they used to call that a drop ball. <laughs> Christy Matthewson had the fadeaway pitch. Somebody's throwing a drop ball. Well, he dropped Soler right there like a bad habit. Seven strikeouts. Two down in the fifth. That's the kryptonite for Jorge Soler. Off speed pitches, especially if you've got that good arm action on the change up, the good movement on the curveball. Two down for Anderson Russell. Russell ended the first with a ground out, ended the third with a strikeout. Satchel Page had the B ball. Does it always be where I want it to be? <laughs> <laughs> There's a dizzy Dean that would ask uh, hitters now what pitch would you like to strike out on <laughs> very accommodating that way look, look out. out oh well, it was Addison Russell who threw a bat the other night that almost hit Baxter and almost in that same spot and that young lady looks like she's just fine thankfully that might be the same seat. It might be. Big crowd here tonight. He didn't spill a drop either. <laughs> She's got a Randy Johnson head on. Yeah. I thought things that said Randy Johnson on them were impervious to bats. I guess that's true. Yeah. There you go. This was Thursday and it almost hit Baxter. And this was all over the interweb. <laughs> An angry Baxter couldn't break it so he did the right thing and found a young fan. Nice.
It's like a kid story. Anyway, this cat in a hat gave me a bath. Ooh, I see what you did. You will not eat green eggs in ham. Two and two. Does Gemma like Dr. Seuss? I don't know. I, she's more into. Uh, Segura behind the bag at second. And Zach Granke works a one, two, three, fifth. His first one, two, three inning tonight. Diamondbacks down 4 1. At the bottom half, the fifth inning. Hey, fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, you know what that means. Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. AJ Pollock bobblehead day coming up here April 23rd at Chase Field. First of our four bobblehead giveaway days this year. Courtesy of Arizona Sports 98.7 FM for 20,000 fans April 23rd. Get the AJ Pollock bobblehead. Get your tickets right now, dbacks.com. Brandon Drury puts it on top of the dugout. Careful. Bumble. <laughs> I think everybody in that front row touched the ball at one point, and nobody got it. That was like the old Ken Stabler, Dave Casper, <laughs> holy roller play. Oh, so close. Brandon single his first time up getting the start at third base tonight. D-back still with only two hits off Kyle Hendricks Drury single to open up the third and Owings single to start the fourth. There was news on AJ today and for more on that here's Kate. That's right AJ was back at the ballpark today but his arm was in a sling after a three hour surgery Tuesday for an acute fracture in the elbow on a bone that actually broke before but never truly healed to fuse it back together the bone was actually taken some bone was taken from AJ's hip and some hardware was inserted there is no definite timetable for his return best case scenario he'll return to baseball activities in three months. But the doctor did warn there's a chance he'll be out for the season, but he is hopeful that this time the bone will fuse back together again due to AJ's strong work ethic. I heard Dr. Sheridan say today absolutely no baseball activity for AJ whatsoever for at least three months. Look at that hardware looked like something you would use to repair a hinge on your garage door. Exactly. He's got that in his elbow now. 
They went in there and found a, a screw from before that was broken. When AJ injured that elbow back in 2010 in the minor leagues and. As uh, Kate said the doctor said that original injury just never healed. And bumps her up the middle Russell's on it. So no AJ Pollock for a while. And in the meantime Kyle Hendricks is just rolling along here. So far he's given up just two hits both singles walk one struck out three. And now with two outs it's Nick Ahmed. Nick grounded out back in the third. So think about this Cubs rotation. You know, it's awfully sexy at the top. You've got Arietta, the Cy Young winner. You've got John Lester, the $155 million man. They brought in Lackey, the Bulldog. But the back end guys, Hamill and Hendricks, they tend to get overlooked, but they can be just as effective as anybody when they're pitching well. Jason Hamill last night had his moments. Six innings, gave up just one run on four hits. Over his top shelf. And Kyle Hendricks works a 1 2 3 fifth. Diamondbacks trail the Cubs 4 1. Backs trail the Cubs 4 1. Fans, we have some must have giveaways on the schedule this year. Be sure to get your tickets for Saturday, April 23rd. There is AJ Pollock. That's when we hand out the AJ Pollock bobblehead, courtesy of Arizona Sports 98 7 FM, April 23. Then on Saturday, May 14th, you'll get a Star Wars soft style t shirt. And then Memorial Day weekend, we're giving away pool bags and barbecue aprons. Nice. Got to get one of those for. The moral compass, Mike Farron. <laughs> See the full giveaway schedule online, dbacks.com. Kyle Hendricks, the pitcher, leads off the sixth against Zach Greinke. Nobody can uh, prepare smoked meats like Mike Farron. I've seen him in action. He's got a smoker. It's uh, it's like he's launching a rocket. The thing is big. He probably has a closet full of barbecue aprons. And they're all used. Brandon Gurry. Mike working Diamondbacks radio pre and post game. In the radio booth, just to our right here. Center fielder, Dexter Fowler. Five in a row, retired by Granke. Diamondback bullpen gets busy. It's the left hander, Andrew Chafin. Sanderson Ford bullpen. Chafin worked Thursday through 19 pitches. Dexter Fowler walked and scored his last time up. He's 0 for 2.
Zach Greinke had a very rocky first inning. The Cubs got three. Fowler let off the ball game with a ground out. Then Hayward singled, Zober singled, Rizzo singled, Bryant doubled, Montero a sack fly. Just like that, it was three nothing. But since that first inning, Zach has given up only three hits. This is laced to the right field corner. And it's in the bullpen, but Fowler. And now at 95 pitches, 61 strikes with Andrew Chafin. Warming up in the left hand hitting Jason Hayward on deck. Zach Greinke last year in L.A. got off to a tremendous start. Opened up April 7th at home against the Padres through six innings of two hit ball then won his next five starts in a row. But it's been quite a different start this year. And he punches out Fowler that's his eighth strikeout two down in the sixth. And curveballs become more and more of a weapon for him as we've gotten into the Latter stages of this ball right game. Fielder, the command it a little better. Drop that one in there for strike three. Well, let's see if he can close out the sixth inning. Jason Hayward singled and scored in that three run Chicago first. He is one for three. Faced, he is settled in. Diamondbacks need to get the offense going. They trail it 4 1. Before they rally here, I'm going to remind the fans that when the Diamondbacks win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every D backs win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. 
Gene Segura leads it off for the Diamondbacks. Bottom six against Kyle Hendricks, trailing 4 1. Segura so far 0 for 2. He has had at least two hits in every game this year. Well, the reason I said the D backs were going to rally, if you look at the stats last year for Kyle Hendricks, first two times through the order, he was very effective. First at bat, 228 was the opponent's batting average, 213 for the second at bat. The third at bat of a ball game, it jumped up to 329. Rizzo is there. Well, Joe Madden has his charts and graphs and the whole thing as well. He looks at his analytics and probably sees the same thing. And so Center the bullpen will get busy for the Cubs. Even though to this point, Hendricks has given up only two hits. Cahill the righty. And there's Warren. Yeah, Hendricks at 73 pitches right now. Look after 75 pitches last season the batting average jumped up to 350. Chris Owings singled stole a base and scored the Diamondback only run to lead off the fourth. CO in center field tonight one for two. Diamondbacks fans will remember Armando Reynoso. Armando Reynoso. It was regular as clockwork. He'd get to that 75 pitch mark and forget how to pitch. <laughs> He would be dazzling for six innings twice through the order and then that third time through you know just the, they'd seen everything he had to offer and uh, it was tough for him to work past 75 pitches. It's CO right away there. Four strikeouts for Hendricks two down now and here's Goldie. Probably out of the zone up that time by CO. Goldie 0 for 2. What do you think about Kyle Hendricks? How many pitches have you seen right down the middle of the plate? Well, it's location. Not very many. And if they have been, they've had movement. Nothing straight. The great ones live out on the edges. Jumps ahead, no balls and two strikes. Eric Cooper behind the plate. Red zone's getting a little bit bigger as the game moves forward. Eric Cooper threw me out of a ball game when I was managing for telling him his strike zone was as big as the world. Well, that does seem a little unfair. Well, but I didn't swear. I didn't say you. Just use geography. That's yeah. all that is. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything bigger at the time in the world. You, you, <laughs> the Zynga. Tap her back to the mound. Well, the Diamondbacks just cannot solve the riddle of Kyle Hendricks. Only two hits so far. They trail it 4-1.
down Phoenix. We're all open for business. The backs trail the Cubs 4 1 set for the seventh inning. The Gig Life High Speed Highlights presented by Cox. A rough first inning for Zach Granke, who gave up three runs but then settled in. Granke retired the final seven he faced, but he leaves trailing 4 1. Well, the bad inning came in the third last time out. This time it was in the first inning, but settled in nicely. The Diamondbacks to figure out a way to get back in this game offensively. Andrew Chafin will now be tasked with holding down this Cubs offense. And Granky gave up only three base hits after that first inning. Your Arizona Federal Credit Union pitching change is Andrew Chafin on for the third time this year. He worked in Thursday's series opener and threw 19 pitches. ERA a little misleading in the early going. I mentioned it the other day. He had a couple runners on base when he came out of the game in favor of Silvino Bracho, who promptly gave up a three run home run to Nolan Arenado. So Chapin's ERA ballooned a little bit, and especially early in the season, those numbers uh, can get up there in a hurry. Well, Ben Zobers to lead it off. He's been on base three times a single, a walk, and an RBI double. He scored a run. This guy's a pain in the neck. He was hitless last night, still managed to have an RBI. Walked three times in Thursday's ball game. Also had an RBI double and scored a run in that series opener. Brandon Dury will charge it. Bare hand play. Can't make it. And Zobrist is on base again, the fourth time tonight. Perfectly executed. Nice effort there by Brandon Drury with the barehanded play, but nowhere near in time to get Zobrist at first. I'm trying to figure out where they want the third baseman here with Zobrist at first. Nobody out for Rizzo. When nobody's on base, they will overshift to the right hand side against Rizzo. And they're trying to move them around like chess pieces right now. Drury's still looking in the dugout. And now they everybody settled in. Matt Williams positioning his infielders. Rizzo had an RBI single and scored in that three run Chicago first. He walked his last time up. There's strike one. Yeah, with this pull shift for a left hander, normally when there's only one defender on the left side of the infield, the Diamondbacks have Nick Ahmed be that one guy. He can cover the most ground. He's used to playing on that left side, but Brandon Drury stays home on that third base side, playing in the hole between third and short. Oh, it was right at the knees, wasn't it? Apparently not. One and one. Been calling those low strikes on the corners all night. That one looked good. Because mm. it was good. Yeah. All right. Not as big as the world that time. The strike zone. <laughs> so. It's a small world after all. That misses as well. Two and one. Rizzo does not have problems with left hand pitching hit 294 versus lefties last year including six homers. I think there are a lot of at bats during the course of a regular season where Anthony Rizzo looks breaking ball against left handed pitching. Back to Goldie steps out of the bag takes off the force Ahmed's got to tag him and he does. Goldie's throw is in the dirt, which prompts Zobers to think he can go ahead and advance to second base, but Nick picks it cleanly out of the dirt and applies the tag to complete that double play. And now they're overshift on the left hand side for Chris Bryant, who had an RBI double in the first. He's one for three. Second double tonight. 
And his third this year. Catcher Miguel Montero. Ryan hits a lot of top spin line drives. He's got a little bit of uppercut in that swing. Hitting out of that exaggerated crouch and when that bat comes through the zone occasionally he'll have that upward plane and if he catches the ball perfectly he can hit it 500 feet but when he's a little out in front of it he's got top spin that ball really sinking hard as it got out there in left field. He's at second with two outs for Miguel Montero. I think he has an RBI sack fly and a double. One for two. Did you like as a hitter facing a pitcher that you had at one time caught previously when you were teammates? Did it make any difference at all? I thought it did, but I imagine the numbers would say it didn't. Yeah, at least you know what he has, and, and ideally you know if there are any patterns that he likes to pitch in, any pitches he likes to throw in certain counts, anything he tries to do differently in certain counts. I think it's a little bit of an advantage, but you still have to be able to hit the ball. Chafin made only three starts for the Diamondbacks two years ago, which was Montero's final year in Arizona, so there wouldn't be a whole lot of familiarity. And Matt Bushman and his wife Sarah Walsh and family all here after more than 1,300 minor league innings warming up in the Sanderson Ford bullpen, awaiting his major league debut after a decade in the minor leagues and hoping to get in the ball game. 1 1. He was warming up last night early, never did get into the game. Double. What's next? Brought to you by CenturyLink, Peralta, Castillo, Tomas. Diamondbacks trail it 4 1. Arizona has a suite here at the ballpark, and it is sweet. Bottom seven, D-backs trail the Cubs 4-1. Hey, fans, this week only T-Mobile customers can get a free season-long subscription to MLB.tv Premium. Just go to T-Mobile.com slash MLB, sign up, and you'll be able to catch every moment on America's fastest-growing LTE network. So here we go, home half of the seven Diamondbacks running out of time. Still only two base hits against Kyle Hendricks. And it's the heart of the order. Peralta, Castillo, Tomas, four, five, and six in the Arizona seventh. They've been out hit nine to two. They trail it four one. 
And Hendricks has retired the last seven he's faced. David has struck out and grounded out. He's 0 for 2. He was 0 for 3 with a walk last night. Trying to hit a few into that Fox Sports Arizona suite up there. Right in front of Dave McKay at first. Aboard. Try to make that spinning grab, pop up and throw it, but the ball stayed on the ground. Lead off man on. Center, Wellington Castillo. Seven or eight steps to his left right there. I think you're right. He was going to try to field that ball, plant that right foot, spin and throw to first base, but just hits off the little finger of the glove, trickles out into shallow right field. Great train on the tracks. Need some base runners. Wellington Castillo has grounded out and walked tonight. Ruby De La Rosa. Is throwing in the Diamondback bullpen, getting some work in down there. I don't imagine he's getting ready for a relief appearance. I wouldn't think so. A lot of times, uh, the starting pitcher on his side throw day, if you're a little concerned about your bullpen, you ask him to wait until later in the ball game, just in case you need an extra arm out of the pen. So I think this is just a routine between starts session in the bullpen. Peralta takes off. Castillo swings through it. The throw is not in time. And David Peralta has his first stolen base of the year. Well, this is something if the Diamondbacks can get a few more base runners on and get the right base runners on, something they could possibly exploit against the Cubs. Hendricks is a little slow to the plate and. I think he's been a little slow unloading the ball. That one bouncing into Zobrist at second base as Peralta slides by safely. And you saw Wellington Castillo with a little Dikembe Matumbo finger wag toward the Cub dugout. Called strike three. Eric Cooper rings him up. Five strikeouts for Hendricks. Yasmani Tomas. Bob, I think we've seen some discipline at bats from Yasmani Tomas. Even though it cost him a called strike three his last time up, he's usually up there hacking tonight, a little more patient. Well, it's an ongoing process. Uh, Yasmani's going to have those games, especially when a, a power pitcher's on the mound throwing lots of fastballs. Uh, he's going to get that bat started early, and occasionally uh, he's going to get himself out early in the count swinging at borderline pitches. But much more patient tonight against Kyle Hendricks, a guy that doesn't throw overly hard. Takes strike one. Yasmani 0 for 2. Last time he was rung up on a pitch by Kyle Hendricks that was out of the strike zone, but Eric Cooper said strike three. Blocked by Miggy. Peralta stays put at second. Got 
that shoulder out there. Hitters count here for Tomas, two and one. Bounces it to Zobrist at second. Baralt is in third, two outs. Third baseman. Brandon. Well, Brandon Drury trying to get that run home from third. Brandon has singled and flied out. He's one for two, getting the start at third base tonight. Brandon out of Grants Pass, Oregon. 13th round pick out of high school there by the Braves in 2010. Smashes that one toward the left field corner. And that's a fair ball. Peralta scores. It's 4-2. An RBI double for Brandon Drury. His second hit tonight. And that's the guy we saw all spring long. Uh, Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game Brandon Drury the RBI double Took an off speed pitch that just kind of fluttered up there on the inside part of the plate sounded like he got jammed a little bit but just muscles it down that left field line for an RBI base hit Joe Madden has seen enough he's got everything you could ask for out of Kyle Hendricks tonight and he will leave Leading 4 2, but the Diamondbacks have the tying run at the plate with two outs in the seventh. Pitching change at Chase Field, 4 2 ball game back after this. With an RBI base hit off the bat of Brandon Drury. Hey fans, the New York Yankees are coming to town May 16th through the 18th. Guarantee the best seats for the lowest price when you buy a mini plan. Customize your own pack and include tickets to all three Yankee games. As always, visit dbacks.com. The New York Yankees. And here's a former Yankee, 28-year-old right-hander. It's Adam Warren, acquired from the Bronx Bombers in December in the trade that sent Starlin Castro to New York. The last season, 43 games. 17 of those were starts. 7-7, seven and seven, a 3-2-9 ERA. Bill Gosselin will hit for the pitcher here. He is the tying run at the plate. Two outs, bottom of the seventh. Drury at second after an RBI double. Into the camera well down there. Awfully hard. Hope everybody's okay.
Phil Goslin, one for four, a couple of strikeouts on the season so far. He struck out in a pinch hit appearance against Justin Grimm in the seventh inning last night. And tough to get some at bats for Phil Goslin so far in this first week of the year. And after he had an excellent spring, hit over 360 with three home runs. You mentioned Starlin Castro uh, going to the Yankees for Adam Warren. Starlin Castro got his 1,000th career hit today at age 26. It's amazing, isn't it? Playing second base for the Yankees. 1 1 pitch. It'll be great to see John and Susan when they come to visit. The great John Sterling. The voice of the New York Yankees. Three and one now. Goslin ahead. Adam Warren's ball can have a lot of life to it. You'll see it jump and dart around up there. He gets good movement in toward the right hand hitters. And he'll spot that straight four seamer as well. Good slider and changeup. And he's behind now. Three balls and a strike with Drury at second. High fly ball. Playable for Jason Hayward. But the Diamondbacks get one more run across. We'll go to the eighth inning. They trail the Cubs 4-2. Butcher on the right. They have come up with a curveball as we start the eighth inning, and out of the Diamondback bullpen is Ruby De La Rosa. Wow. We thought he was just throwing a side session down there, but here he is. Yeah, curveball once again, swinging a miss by Brenly. <laughs> Ruby started the series opener here Thursday night, went three and a third, gave up seven runs, six were earned on six hits, he threw 70 pitches, and here he is on in relief. To open up the eighth inning, and he'll face the Cubs' Jorge Soler. So, uh, I can't wait to hear Chip Hale's post-game comments. Stay tuned for those on Diamondback Live post-game show. We'll find out what's the deal with that. I know the bullpen is a little uh, short-handed. Matt Bushman was back there uh, that they brought up from the minor leagues for some length, and Ruby was warming up down there for a good while in the bullpen. Well, with the off day Monday, everybody gets an extra day of rest between starts. And since Ruby had such a short outing uh, his first time out, uh, a little extra work here, possibly in preparation for his next start. Well, when Ruby was in Los Angeles and then in Boston, there was always debate around him with his tremendous stuff. The stuff is there. But there was debate that maybe he's better served. As a reliever, come in and just power his way through an inning or two instead of trying to get through six, seven, or eight. Right to Nick Abe. And there are a 
were people both in the Dodger and Red Sox organizations that thought maybe Ruby should be used as a reliever. But this could just be sort of a patchwork one time only deal here in Arizona. Well, no tricks in that at bat by Soler. All fastballs, 95 or better. He's got that power stuff. He can be a handful, certainly for one inning, if he just comes out and unloads on you. Addison Russell has ended three innings tonight. He's 0 for 3. Ruby not messing around. Yeah, this might be part of the game plan, you know, to get Ruby to trust his fastball. Is nope. that the issue for him? Yeah, I think a lot of times it is. I, I don't think he realizes how hard he throws and how much movement he has on that fastball. Occasionally we'll try to trick a hitter, you know, throw a little slider, throw a change up, and fall behind in the count, and then that fastball suddenly becomes very hittable. But dropped a slider in there now, so it's not an all fastball outing for Ruby De La Rosa. That's a good one right there. Perfect location, too. Just beautiful. One and two now. Well, you mentioned this the other night, Pedro Martinez on Twitter. Got, Pedro's been on the social media a lot lately, talking about the Diamondbacks, but Pedro, who knows Ruby and knew him growing up, said Ruby thinks too much, overuses his pitches. He doesn't realize how great a stuff he has and doesn't trust it. Ooh. And maybe one inning here, that level of trust will go up because he is not fooling around out there. Boy, he just rushed that one right by the Cubs shortstop. Elevated fastball. Everything has been 95 or better, with the exception of the one swinging strike slider he threw at 84. Well, Adam Warren, the pitcher, will take the at bat here with two outs in the eighth inning. Heads up on that right side. Anytime you have a guy on the mound throwing as hard as Ruby is tonight, and a pitcher that's not used to hitting at the plate. Good chance you're going to see some foul balls to that right side if he makes contact. Yep, there's another one. <laughs> Chip Hale was asked about Pedro Martinez's take on Ruby, and Chip said uh, he thought it was spot on. That Ruby, just trust your stuff. Let the catcher put a sign down and let it go because the stuff is good enough to beat the hitter. No matter what the pitch is. Well, the pitching matchups for the Dodger series who came out today, and Bob, as you mentioned uh, very astutely, there's an off day on Monday, so everybody gets sort of gets pushed back a bit. But Ruby is scheduled to start the game at Dodger Stadium Wednesday night against LA's Alex Wood. So if he comes out here, throws, you know, 13, 15 pitches, whatever, it's not the end of the world. Certainly if it boosts his confidence. Called strike three, ring him up and sit him down. Two strikeouts in the inning. The relief appearance for Ruby De La Rosa. Bottom eight on the way. Diamondbacks trail the Cubs 4 2. Ruby gets the strike call there from Eric Cooper, as big as the world.
for Borowski as we get set for D-backs Live presented by CenturyLink, our post-game show. Joe, the D-backs trying to claw back into this game, but I know in the post-game we're going to look hard at Zach Granke's outing. Again, the theme, one big inning against Granke. What will you look at? Joe, do you often hear me say pitching is like real estate. It's all about location, location, location. And Granke struggled early on with that. I'll break down his outing and show you how the Cubs were able to take advantage of it. All right, we'll look forward to that as well as hear from manager Chip Hale and reaction from the clubhouse, guys. Thanks very much, Joe and Jody, coming up right after our ball game here as Nick Ahmed leads off the Arizona eighth against Adam Warren. Ahmed Segura Owings 9 1 and 2. Diamondbacks trail at 4 2. Adam Warren prior to last year had been a very dependable part of the Yankee bullpen 69 appearances two years ago for New York all in relief and had an ERA under three. But last year the Yankees had a whole bunch of injuries in their rotation so Warren began and then ended the year as a starting pitcher. Worked out of the bullpen in the middle of the season as a starter last year he wasn't nearly as effective. But he's been a very dependable arm for the Yankees last couple of years in the bullpen. So the Cubs gave up Starlin Castro to bring him here. And down the road he might start for Chicago, but right now he's a big piece of this bullpen in 2016. And as a former starting pitcher, possibly a future starting pitcher, he has a four pitch mix. He's got a good sinking, tailing fastball, good change up, throws a curve and a slider. Fastball lives in the low 90s, not much of a strikeout pitcher. Anderson Ford bullpen. Brad Ziegler is up and throwing. Brad works last night through one inning, 11 pitches. Also worked that third game of the Rocky series. You got to keep your closers sharp. It's always a balancing act. If your team's on a winning streak and a lot of close ball games, he may be asked to pitch three days in a row, four out of five. It's especially tricky with a guy like Brad, who's 36 years old and will be 37 in October. That's a fair ball, one throw for Bryant, and they get Segura. Three up, three down for Warren, and the hitter will be Chris Owings. We're talking about those occasions where Brad Ziegler might need a little rest down there in the bullpen. The good news is you got Tyler Clippard, who's closed. You got Daniel Hudson, who certainly has closer stuff. So. A little better equipped this year to handle a Brad Ziegler vacation if necessary. Chris Owing singled, stole a base, and scored a run in the fourth. He's one for three tonight. Four for 18 on the year. Drifting into the seats. One and one. Cubs bullpen busy. Trevor Cahill, who got the loss last night. Left hander Clayton Richard. Two and one on CO. Cubs will have the top of the order due up in the ninth. That's Fowler Hayward Zobrist. Series concludes tomorrow afternoon. 1-10 first pitch on Fox Sports Arizona. Shelby Miller against Cy Young winner Jake Arietta. Fly ball, shallow right center Zobrist calling for it. Hayward calls him off, and Warren retires all four that he faces. A 1 2 3 8. Ninth inning we go. Diamondbacks down two.
invite you to play Kachinko by signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. Ninth inning at Chase Field. D backs trail the Cubs 4 2, and Brad Ziegler, who worked in last night's ball game through 11 pitches, is on again tonight. He'll face Dexter Fowler, Jason Hayward, and Ben Zobers at the top of the Cub order. Zach Greinke tonight went six innings, had a rough first, gave up three runs in that first inning. And he left the ball game. Four runs allowed, seven hits in six. He walked three, struck out eight. Diamondbacks have been trying to chip away ever since. They got one in the fourth and one in the seventh, so it's 4 2 here. As Fowler leads it off for the Cubs in the ninth. Drury in on the grass at third. There's strike one. Dexter Fowler has walked and scored. He struck out twice and grounded out. 0 for 3. Kyle Hendricks was terrific tonight for Chicago. Two runs allowed on just four hits. He worked six and two third, a walk and five strikeouts. Two and two on Dexter Fowler. Brad Ziegler. 30 saves and 32 chances last year, including 28 straight to close the year. They're looking for his first save opportunity this season. Fowler leads off the ninth with a base hit. You see Nick cheating up the middle of the field just a little bit, but can't quite get to that one as it shoots right off the mound, just to the right of second base on into center field. Jason Hayward singled and scored as part of that three run Chicago first he is one for four. Diamondbacks if they can keep it a four two ball game here. We'll have Goldie Peralta Castillo do up three four and five in the bottom of the ninth. Goes without saying, a very small sample size, only two at bats between these two guys. But Jason Hayward with a single and a home run. Brad Ziegler just doesn't give up many home runs because of that tailing, sinking action on the submarine delivery. Sinker, that great changeup that he's learned to throw in the slider. That changeup has become a real weapon for Brad. Hitters just don't see that type of pitch from this type of delivery very often. Might be a good time to throw one. Yeah. Hit him in the leg. And you can see how upset Brad is with himself there. And he didn't mean to do that. Second baseman. Uh, if you've just thrown your best fastball and the guy hooked it foul 400 feet, that's a good time to come back with a changeup on the next pitch. Unfortunately, he just hung on to it a little bit too long and flips Hayward on the back of that right leg. And now you got a real trouble here because Zobrist has reached base safely every time he's been up there tonight. Three hits and a walk.
Segura, Ahmed, and Goldie. Fowler's at third, two down. That's why you love Brad Ziegler late in ball games rarely gives up fly balls rarely gives up home runs more often than not you're going to get that ground ball and with this airtight defense on the infield behind him that's usually what happens. All right now here's the million dollar question you want to work to the lefty Rizzo or the righty Bryant here with first and second open and two outs. Do I have any other choices. <laughs> Sadly no I think they're having that discussion right now with Mike Butcher out there. Don't forget Diamondback Live post game show follows our ball game Joe Borowski Jody Jackson brought to you by CenturyLink you'll hear from D-backs manager Chip Hale who tonight used Ruby De La Rosa out of the bullpen to work a one two three eighth inning. You'll hear Chip talk about that and other aspects of tonight's ball game coming up next Diamondback Live post game show. Really not enough history to base anything on Rizzo's had one at bat so has Chris Bryant against Brad Ziegler both 0 for 1. And they're going to take their chances with the right hand. Brian, as we've discussed, is far more susceptible to the strikeout, and you have the righty righty matchup. And Rizzo has been a diamondback killer. He had an RBI single in the first, so in 32 career games against the D backs, Rizzo has 28 RBIs. And Brian, who led the league in strikeouts last year, is on deck, so they'll take their chances with him. Now Rizzo four for eight in the early part of the season here with runners in scoring position so uh, I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with this decision that makes me nervous. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well <laughs> so there you go the free pass they're on the corners with two outs for the defending National League rookie of the year. Third baseman. I guess I should say reigning National League rookie of the year you can't really defend that title. Bryant two for four a pair of doubles he's knocked in a run. So here we go two on and two out ninth inning. Segura the second baseman behind the second base bag as they shade Bryant as they have all night toward the left hand side. Jury right on that line at third. Remember, he can get down there in that crouch and get to a low ball. Big guy up there at 6'5. But he will reach down and get it. So you got to be careful. 2 0. There is a base open at second base. Miguel Montero's on deck. It in there for strike one. A little frisbee slider didn't take a lot of break, but stayed on that inside corner for called strike. Bryant thought it was below the knees. Eric Cooper says strike one. Two and two. Talking over not only what they want to throw on the next pitch, but should it happen to miss the zone and run the count to full, what do you want to throw on the full count delivery? Can't get him to bite, and it does indeed go full three and two. Dexter Fowler is the runner at third, and Anthony Rizzo at first. Two outs, three balls, two strikes to Chris Bryant. Rizzo takes off. Ooh, ball four. Eric Cooper doesn't flinch back there. 
And the bases are loaded for Miguel Montero. Pat Ziegler using sinkers and sliders here against Chris Bryant. He misses with the first two sinkers down below the bottom of the zone. Comes back with that slider. We've got the benefit of the doubt on the call right there. Foul ball on a sinker. Tries to lead him out of the zone with that slider. And that last one was low. So here you go. The former Diamondback, Miguel Montero, who doubled in the third off sack. Granke steps up. Bases full, two outs. And Brad wants to talk it over. And if anybody knows Brad Ziegler, it's Miguel Montero. Brad clearly has something in mind here, the way he wants to attack Miggy in this situation. Don't forget, series finale tomorrow, Diamondback Live pregame show. At 12:30, Shelby Miller versus Jake Arrieta. Fowler at third here. Rizzo at second and Bryant at first. Two outs in the ninth. River game summary a rocky first inning for Zach Greinke who gave up three to the Cubs to start it off Diamondbacks at one point were down four nothing they have been trying to chip away here and it's a four two ball game as we start the whole half of the ninth and on for the Cubs their third pitcher tonight Hector Rondon to try and close it out Rondon uh, finished up the first game of this series the 14 to 6 Cubs victory pitched an inning struck out Yasmani Tomas and Chris Owens before getting Ricky Weeks to fly out to end the ball game. Fastball slider combination about an even 50 50 mix. Well these guys were cut out for him. the heads of state of the Diamondback order will hit in the ninth Goldie Peralta Castillo three four and five. And Goldie has had very good luck against Rondon in his career. Diamondbacks have been out hit 10 to 4. They trail it 4 2. Goldie tonight 0 for 3. They got some pretty good arms at the back end of this bullpen with Strope, Rondone, Warren. They're in good shape back there. 
Wood from the left hand side. 96 is in there says Eric Cooper and Goldie's down one and two. An erratic strike zone tonight. Yeah, to say the least. Oh man. Off the plate away at 96. Got him. See a lot of pitches that move like that at that velocity. Here's David Peralta now. Singled, stole a base, and scored a run his last time up. Yeah. Zobers did second on the high. Two down. Don't forget, stay tuned. Diamond back live post game show. Joe Borowski standing by with Jody Jackson. They'll have Chip Hale's post game news conference. And to listen to Chip give his explanation for Rudy Ruby De La Rosa's relief appearance here tonight, among other things. So that'll be interesting. And look ahead to tomorrow. What a pitching matchup that'll be in the series finale. Shelby Miller and Jake Arietta. But first, Wellington Castillo, and then hopefully more. Welly 0 for 2. He walked in the fourth. Missed at 97, 1 and 0. Need a base runner here. Loop and a blast. Good crowd here tonight. 32,000 plus at Chase Field. Roof and panels open on a gorgeous night here in the Valley. Most of those fans still here. It's been a good ball game. And they're at 95, 2 and 1. will look to Shelby Miller tomorrow to try and salvage a four game split up against the reigning Cy Young winner Jake Arietta. Well this one got away from Arizona right away in the first inning when against Zach Greinke the Cubs got three runs on four hits. Yeah, this one was uh, really over before it ever got started just an outstanding performance tonight by Kyle Hendricks it uh, kind of gets lost in the shuffle with this high powered Cubs offense and Jake Arietta and John Lester, John Lackey, but Kyle Hendricks was outstanding tonight. Yeah, Kyle Hendricks gave up just two runs on four hits and six and two third, a walk and five strikeouts. And he'll get the win in what turns out to be a 4 2 final from Chase Field. Let's start Diamondback Live. The post game shows on the air. Joe Borowski standing by with Jody Jackson. Jody. Thanks a lot.